is the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you jack wagons! Brad McNoise Evans here, joined by the good son, Nathaniel Lundy. It is indeed the Fade 5 Podcast on a hashtag, why not? Tequila Tuesday, presented by Suavecito. Go to Total Wine ah. Bar. Uh, go to your liquor store, demand it if they don't have it, and uh, uh, make sure you pour yourself a nice, neat version of the Suavecito on Yeho and just sip on it and enjoy your evening. It is delicious. It is fantastic. It's got the uh, hints of vanilla uh, that strike the tongue at the perfect time as it's going down. So uh, very easily consumable Suavecito tequila. And uh, Lundy, what was easy consumable last night was the fact uh, if you were in Dallas, you watched the Cowboys roll over TB12 and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course, uh, the status of Brady for next year at uh, 45, 46 years old. We do not know. Is he going to be in the booth? Is he going to be on the field? Is he just going to be on a beach somewhere in the Caribbean? We have no friggin' idea. But what we do know is that the divisional round is going to get underway this upcoming weekend in the National Football League. Uh, some of the early lines are already out. Uh, the sides and the totals, no player props to surface yet, but just looking at the standard action that is available, uh, is there anything that is uh, catching your eye, my friend? Well, first of all, I just want to remind everybody, uh, Tuesday, it's not just for tacos anymore. Um, you know, just I, Hey, if you and I declare that it is a hashtag tequila Tuesday, um, we're getting to the point where it's going to be tequila Wednesday tequila yeah. thursday I mean, day. we don't want to we don't we don't want anybody to be unhealthy but at the same time i mean when you're just sitting there with that neat pour in the evening i'm just saying i'm just throwing it out there because man is there some good college basketball tonight we're going to talk about yes. that also some good stuff i've got some good stuff for you on uh the ice as well yeah brad actually the one that stands out to me that i just can't help right now and this is more of a gut than getting into the analytics but um I, when i see over a touchdown for Danny Dimes, I'm yeah. kind of feeling like I need yeah. to take the Giants plus the seven and a half. And in fact, I did already jump on it because I'm worried that it may get itself to a flat seven um, by the time we get closer to game time that we may start to see a little bit of that money come in on the Eagles side. And therefore, that line comes down um, just a little bit. But I mean, r- right now I'm looking at what the Giants are doing. And I'm thinking, man, I'll take a touchdown with Daniel Jones for what he's been doing right now for that giant squad. So, yeah, the first thing that jumped out to me um, when those lines came out, and obviously this line actually came out even before the results um, of last night. This one was already posted, but that's the one that I felt like I needed to jump on was just because if you're going to give me a touchdown with a guy that keeps finding a way to get shit done, I'm rolling with it. Yeah, and you got to remember, too, that uh, they didn't even see Danny Dimes the last matchup. It was uh, Davis Webb in that game, and as a result, uh, Philadelphia didn't cover. It was 22-16 to 16 in Week 18. They had something on the line, which was the top seed. If you recall, they are in the NFC. So, yeah, kind of pull all that together, and, uh, yeah, I kind of with you. I-, I like the Giants and the points. I also like another dog, and it's Cincinnati plus the five going against Buffalo, and – uh, kind of the rematch of what had happened, obviously, to Bar Hamlin on that tragic incident. And thank God that he is A-OK, and it's uh, miraculous, his quick recovery. And hopefully, uh, he's going to be back at 100% very, very soon. So, uh, we get a replay of that game. And uh, the way that Buffalo has kind of slipwalked at times here down the stretch, you wonder if five points are too many. And I kind of like Cincinnati plus a five as a result. Buffalo very well could win. I have them representing the AFC in the Super Bowl, but this feels like to me another TYG, as you always say, special, uh, a three-point victory for Buffalo if they do sneak by. So early thoughts and divisional round of the NFL playoffs, but yeah, let's dig in on that main course, college basketball, another edition of the Fade Five. Number five. All right, let's go to the Mountain West. I got a two-leg money line parlay for you. Leg numero uno, give me the Utah State Aggies. Take it on UNLV at home, and then aim high and salute Air Force 
uh, a team also at home take it on Wyoming on the money line. Both these hits, it's plus 139 at DraftKings. Let me give you some background on the Aggies. Uh, coming off a loss and, and a convincing loss at that in Nevada against the Wolfpack. Uh, but they're at home. And they are draining a ridiculous amount of threes, whether away or especially within their own friendly confines, where they're shooting 43.9% from downtown on the season. Uh, Some of the best offensive teams in college basketball. Not only are they number one in three-point percentage offense, they're number 14 effective field goal percentage offense overall. And defensively, uh, that's where the question marks reside, especially along the arc. Uh, They are number... 299 and three point percentage D, but here's the good news UNLV, uh, not exactly making it rain often this season from along the arc and Kevin Kruger's bunch as well. Number 208 and three point percentage defense, and number 216 overall, an effective field goal percentage offense. I know what you're saying. Hey, the running Rebs. Ran into the pit and they knocked off New Mexico here recently, 84 to 77. Uh, But I think Utah State, far away the better team. They're going to get the win at home uh, and just, again, rain triples as a result. Then you look at Air Force and there is rumors or speculation right now making the rounds that Hunter Maldonado of the University of Wyoming may not be able to play or if he does play, is going to be less than 100%, and he is the heart and soul of the Cowboys' offense, a guy that can back it down in the post, which he does very often. He can kick it out uh, along the perimeter and make it rain himself from outside on occasion. Great distributor, great rebounder for a guard, just a, a surefire scorer as well. And Wyoming's had a lot of question marks this season, but uh, I will say this about Air Force. They have played well, not only at home, but also away. Uh, you know, a team that is number four and assist to field goals main on the season in all of college basketball. And they're number three as well. In effect, a field goal percentage defense in the Mountain West Conference. And they're highly reliant on the three. And they make a lot of them in conference action. Over 40% of their shots come from along the perimeter where they're draining 37.2%. And you look at Wyoming. Uh, their defensive uh, uh, the prowess is non-existent. They are dead last in multiple categories, including adjusted defensive efficiency, again, in league play. So pull it all together. Long story short, Utah State money line, Air Force money line. Just got to win straight up. Both those events occur. It's plus 139 at DraftKings. Luddy, fade or follow. Yeah, it was kind of scary for Maldonado. He actually had to come. He, he came out of the last game for Wyoming because he was having trouble breathing. He had to go to the locker room with the trainers and all this kind of stuff. So there's questions about what his status will be um, on this road game against Air Force, which is kind of a big deal for him because he's from the Springs. Uh, he's from Colorado Springs, which is where the Air Force Academy is, for those of you that are geographically challenged. Um, so, you know, last year it was kind of cool for him. I think he made like a game-winning layup. So he's basically, you yeah. know, at home, right, where he's from, the whole thing. Um, But even if he is remotely limited at all, you lose so much on a team that even with him has lost seven in a row. So I'm all about Air Force. I like what you're doing here with this two-leg money line. I just want to throw it out there. I would lay the two and a half with Air Force with this one because if Maldonado is even remotely um, limited or can't go at all, Um, the Falcons should be able to roll the Cowboys and give them their eighth straight loss. So I love pairing it together with the Aggies on the money line. I think this is a really solid um, payday here for a simple two-leg money line. But I can tell you that I have already thrown a unit down on Air Force by itself, minus two and a half based on the Maldonado news. So love the the two-legger, but also like the idea of throwing in Air Force by themselves. Make that moolah in the Mountain West. Number five. All right, let's go to the Behemoth Big Ten Conference. Wait, 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 hold on. Number four. Hey, there oh, we go. Oh, yeah, better. there it is. Yeah, there that's, it is. That's, uh, wait, wait. that's better. Sorry, I, uh, I, I, I pressed the, the wrong button on the old uh, sound machine here. Yeah, it wasn't a 5A, 5B kind of situation. <laughs> this is a, a clear-cut, surefire number four, and it is the under in Penn State and Wisconsin. 129 and a half is the available total right now. Minus 110 at BetMGM. Uh, what is the MO at Wisconsin? 
slowing it down. Uh, they love the slow jams, you know, put on the Jodeci, put on the Silk uh, from the uh, mid and early 90s and just sit back and relax because they're going to bleed the clock uh, on practically every single possession. Penn State's going to fall into that style of play, though they prefer more of tempo style. Now, Penn State, a veteran savvy club, and they had a key victory on the road, beating my fighting Illini in Champaign, but they've lost the other true road matchups that they've had on the docket this year. And you look at the trends. They're all pointing the opposite direction of what I'm recommending here. Uh, Wisconsin, 7-3 on the over, uh, meaning 7 out of the last 10, they've hit the over uh, in those games. And uh, mirror image, uh, Penn State has hit the over in 7 of their last 10. Uh, we'll see if Tyler Wall is back, a key uh, post player for the Badgers. Uh, but Wisconsin, uh, one of the best defensive teams in the country. Only get we have 32.3% outside the arc, number 25 overall, and it's just a defensive efficiency, according to Ken Palm. A decent three-point shooting team, but it's all about the style of play. And you know, a great guard, uh, I think his uh, favorite animal is a slug. So as a result, it's going to be a snail's pace tonight. And as a result, I believe this game is going to finish in the low to mid-60s. As a result, the under hit. So Lundy, fade or follow. Nittany Lions and Badgers under 129.5 in Madison, minus 110. At BetMGM. In full disclosure, I'm on vacation starting in about eight hours, so I'm sorry that I hit the wrong button there, folks. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm, like, my brain is already fried. Brad knows the whole story. I'm technically supposed to be on vacation tomorrow, but there's a storm coming. I had to change. It's just imminent margaritas. That is minus a million right now at every sports book. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The over under on uh, my liver just up like literally sprouting legs and up and leaving my body. Um, it's it's I mean, it's even money right now, folks. It's plus yeah, 100 easy, uh, easy. that all of a sudden medical uh, miracles happen and my liver just leaves. Uh, I'm all about the under in this one. You talked about the trends pointing in a particular direction, but sometimes that is exactly when you want to try to go the other way yep. um with with stuff like this because you wind up with a number that you can take advantage of and drop the under on this one so 129 and a half sometimes i feel like when i'm watching some of these big 10 games it's like watching big 10 football right you just you don't like where where are the points going to come from because you just got dudes bodying each other up getting super physical um they play the same way on the hardwood that they do out on the field in my opinion so play the under in this one 129 and a half i think it's going to be close i'll be honest with you but i think they're going to tuck just under at Wisconsin, root for the root canal. Number three. All right, numero tres. Let's go to the Sunflower State Showdown. This is going to be uh, front and center on uh, the big screen at uh, Casa de Lundy tonight because his wife is a diehard Kansas fan. And this is the first time in I, roughly a millennium, I think, uh, that you have a meaningful matchup. At this juncture in the season of mid-January between K-State and Kansas, this game being played in Manhattan, and it's going to be rowdy, it's going to be raucous, uh, it is going to be deafening, uh, to say the least, because Kansas State is for real, and as a result, I am taking them plus two and a half in this rivalry against KU, minus 110, available at BetMGM. Why do I like uh, Mr. Tang's? Uh, club and maybe I am an honorary member of the uh, Tang Gang, but uh, you look at Kansas State, a team that's playing very up tempo, and this is really the antithesis, uh, the exact opposite of what recent brands of Kansas State basketball have exhibited. Remember, they hung a buck sixteen on Texas in Austin a couple of weeks ago. A very solid defensively from the perimeter as well. They're number one in assists of field goals made in the Big 12, one of the elites in that category in the country. Uh, you know, in terms of defensive efficiency and league action, more middle of the road uh, and a decent but not spectacular rebounding team, uh, but still uh, a squad that, and they're number two or number three in every single offensive category you can think of in Big 12 play. Now you look at Kansas, uh, they're shooting. A uh, decent 34.6% uh, from the perimeter and or excuse me, over 40%, more than decent. That's what they're shooting from the perimeter in Big 12 action, but they're giving up right around 35% along the perimeter in Big 12 action. Uh, Kansas uh, defensively 12th best in the country. Again, though, I think K-State, all that buildup angst. They have lost 
15 of the last 16 matchups in this series. And I think it's like 204 to 92 all time, Kansas to Kansas State. The, will they exact their revenge tonight in Manhattan? I'm not saying they win, but I think this one's going to be below a bucket loss if they do catch the L. So, fade or follow, Lundy, trying to bury your bias here uh, and your goodwill that uh, you have to earn with your wife. Kansas State plus two and a half against KU minus 110 at BetMGM. Oh, boy. Why do you do this to me? Why do you do this? Hey, Why you know you what? You can say Kansas wins and you take the points. I mean, I'm just, Brad, do you know you have to go all the way back to February of 2019 to find a spread that is even remotely in Kansas State's favor? um in this one like normally you're looking at double digits or at least you're looking at a half dozen plus points um when it comes to these two teams uh Kansas normally just has their number but what I find fascinating about the matchups and I know we're getting into some deep territory here but the home team has covered 24 of the last 34 times these teams have played the home team manages wow. to get the cover. Um, and so we're going deep in history for that one. Um, so I, um, I, I'm going to take the Wildcats. I think I, I, I'll take the two and a half. I don't know whether they're going to win or not, but it could be a buzzer beater. So why not? I'll roll with you on this one, and I'm going to cross my fingers that my wife doesn't listen to this episode. All right, Lundy, here's what I'm going to do. I am a man of compromise, and I want you uh, to stay in your wife's good graces. Oh, don't, especially... you, don't you go compromise, don't you? Don't go, don't, you know, don't go changing. Try to please me. <laughs> I'm, tr I'm trying to help you out, man. If you want okay. some action on this game, because I know you're going to be glued to television watching it yes. uh, because it's, uh, it's a demanding uh, development in your house as a result. Uh, let's do a same game parlay. Uh, right now at uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, let's take Ooh, Kansas okay. State at plus seven and a half. And I'm building this in real time as okay. we're taping the pod. I'm going to take the total down. To 140 and a half and slam the over. Uh, you get that at minus 110. If you want to take it up to 141 and a half, minus 105. If you want 142 and a half, plus 105. And maybe that's a sweet spot for you. K State plus seven and a half and the over 142 and a half. Do you sign on with that? Yes, I do. Uh, in fact, because that alt total that you just brought up is going to make an appearance in bonus time. Oh, little sneak preview. Go, K-State. Sorry, Mrs. Lundy. Number two. All right, numero dos. All the fate five today. Let's go to Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm going to go with the Butler Bulldogs, plus seven and a half uh, in a matchup at home against the Creighton Blue Jays, minus 110, uh, available at BetMGM. Now, Manny Bates is not expected to suit up one of the – key postman for the Bulldogs in this matchup, but uh, they didn't have in the last game. They won that straight up there at home, and th this is a team uh, that has played very well at home this season. Uh, number 57, they're at Hinkle Coliseum and adjusted defensive, or excuse me, offensive efficiency on the year in home matchups. Uh, not only that, too, but they're shooting 56.5% inside the arc and 38.9% from three. Uh, Seamus Lucosius uh, is a name to know. He had a breakout performance, nearly 30 points in the last game. And Creighton has not won on the road this season. And on the road this season, they're number 355 in three-point percentage offense, uh, shooting just 23.3%. Uh, not only that, uh, they are a very good defensive team. And, yes, I know on the road in those four matchups, they face the likes of Texas, Marquette, UConn, and Xavier. Butler not remotely in the same class, but seven and a half points? This line open at six, it's really skyrocketed, largely because I think the word is getting out about Manny Bates. Uh, but I think that modest bunch keeps this one somewhat snug and gets the cover. So, fade or follow, Butler, Murph Bulldogs, plus seven and a half, minus 110. At BetMGM. I will follow for one reason. I just brought up uh, the stat between K-State and Kansas. In this uh, 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 matchup between Butler and Creighton, the home team is 15-2 and two against the wow. spread. 
I'm going with the home team. You could give it to me at six and a half, and I would take it just because this is what keeps happening between these two teams. The home team covers 15 yep. out of the last 17 times. I'm that's a I know students come and go, blah, blah, blah. We talk about this all the time in college. I, that's a trend, folks. That's a trend that I'm going to follow. 15 and two is a massive number. Butler, boom times imminent. Score the cover. Number one. All right, numero uno on the Fade 5 pod today. Let's go uh, back to the Big 12 and another massive matchup between Iowa State. Uh, They're at uh, Hilton Coliseum going up against uh, the University of Texas Longhorns. And I'm going to lay the chalk here with the Cyclones. You're going to register an F5 on the Fujita scale for all you weather nerds out there tonight. Minus 110 at BetMGM. Iowa State has been one of the surprise sensations of the season, in my estimation. Uh, TJ Altenberger is done a tremendous job coaching this team they are number five on the year in adjusted offensive efficiency in all of college basketball they have forced the most turnovers of any team in college hoops as well 29.5 percent of the time very good along the perimeter defensively giving up 30 percent flat uh, i think the key to this game is going to be the outside shooting of grill uh gabe kalsher the former minnesota golden gopher and holmes uh because you look at uh, their matchup in, against Texas. Texas has really struggled in perimeter defense, uh, giving up 37.7% in Big 12 play, and they're dead last in three different defensive categories in league action. So you put that together, you put that together too with the fact that Iowa State is an outstanding rebounding team, number one in offensive, number one in defensive rebounding in the Big 12, and just playing it at such a high level and at home, and Hilton will be jam-packed tonight, so it's going to be ear-piercing for the visiting team. So as a result, Iowa State, I think, cruises. Uh, they're going to win by five-plus tonight to a sweat-free cover, minus two-and-a-half against the Longhorns, minus 110 at BetMGM. Lundy, fade or follow? Ooh, man. I see you lay out all the logic, all the reasons, and I just throw logic right out uh, the window on you. Nope, I'm gonna fade you on this one. I don't know really? why. I don't know why. I just kind of, I just kind of am. Longhorns. Uh, uh, I don't know how much I trust them. I know we, we, you know, <laughs> we, we, a few weeks back, we obviously know lots of drama uh, yeah, off the court. Yeah. Um, I, man, I. I I don't know if, if if Iowa State can 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 continue to clean the glass like they have been. Texas will be in trouble. Um, my concern is I feel like Iowa State's a little top heavy in their scoring. I feel like they need some help off the bench when you've occasionally got to bring some guys out. I want to see some guys help out off the bench there. I'm going to fade you, but I, I'm and it's possible that Iowa State actually wins this. But maybe this thing finishes in one of those positions like we just talked about with Kansas and K State. Where it's a where it's a where it's a tight one, um, so this might be another one, Brad. That I decide to do. I'm not going to try to do it here on the fly. This might be one that I like the game, but I have some fun with the alt line, and I try to same game it, um, just in case Texas sneaks something out, pop this thing the other direction, and take the Cyclones like plus three and a half, and then play around with the total a little bit. That that might be the direction. Um, that I decide to go with this one as opposed to taking it on the straight line because Texas is capable. Texas is more than capable at Hilton tonight of coming in and slapping them upside the head. I just don't know whether they will. I don't know which version of the horns I'm going to get. They haven't lost on the road yet. They're two and zero. this is only their third true road game of the year. Yeah. Yeah. But Iowa state's also perfect at home at nine and zero. So th- this is, this is a tough one for me. You set me up here at number one, you jerk uh, with a really difficult <laughs> one to be able to predict. So I think I might have to alt this one or alt line the spread and not same game it, but put it together with something else. All right. Uh, Lundy's going to earn all of those adult beverages uh, racking yeah. his brain after that one. And I'm doing I'm it for the fight. Now Rokers and the Cyclones are going to get it done tonight. We're also going to get it done. Right now, it's bonus time, Lundy. I know you got uh, NHL. He got some like boost on uh, some uh, site that you were betting on. So congratulations yeah. on that. Going to use that to your advantage. So tell me what you like in hockey, uh, maybe elsewhere in college hoops or the NBA. 
Uh, let me start off uh, with one more here in uh, college hoops. I told you about, <clears throat> excuse me, I told you about that total in the Kansas and K State game making an appearance again. I did two alt lines here talking about Boston College and North Carolina. I brought that total down to an alt line of 138 and a half. Kansas and K State at 142 and a half. Each of those getting me a five point buffer, roughly. Uh, on what the totals are. And then I'm playing the over. So I'm just bringing it down, but I'm playing the over in both of them. At DraftKings, that came out to a plus 130. I already gave you what was going to be a bonus pick, which is to take Air Force minus the two and a half, given the question mark that is Hunter Maldonado for Wyoming. So I will take the Falcons um, absolutely at home in uh, in that one. Two other uh, games that I alt-lined, Brad, that I'm taking advantage of, uh, Baylor and Texas Tech. Uh, bringing that one down to 138 and a half, and then Houston and Tulane to 139 and a half. Each of those playing the over on the alt total. That one uh, comes out to be a, uh, I think it's actually uh, up in the 160s. I don't have the number hit in front of me, but it's actually a really nice payday with that one, if I do nice. recall. Uh, let me go to the ice uh, for you. A one-game parlay on the ice. The Buffalo Sabres will be at the United Center to take on the absolutely craptastic uh, Blackhawks. Um, we're going to take Buffalo on the money line, and we're bringing the total to five and a half and playing the over in that one. That same game parlay on the ice is a plus 140. Then if I take Winnipeg and the Flyers on the money line, just straight money line picks with those two, a two-legger at plus 116 and a two-legger on an alt-line total. Take that Buffalo-Chicago. I told you to take the five and a half. Add to it Seattle and Edmonton at five and a half and play the over in that one. Uh, that is a plus 150. And if you want to get really crazy with the cheese whiz, if you take the Winnipeg-Philly <laughs> money line, if you take that alt line total that I just said, Buffalo and Chicago, as well as Edmonton and Seattle, that one each game over five and a half. I did them separately as two leggers, but if you want to get crazy, you put them together. They're a plus four twenty five. Um, I think that I could go four and zero oh with those particular picks. Um, and that was actually where I had the boost. BetMGM had given me a 20%, I think it was 20. I don't know. I don't pay attention. Uh, it was a 20% boost for a four-legger in the NHL. So that was why I went ahead and put all four of those uh, together for uh, for this evening. And then finally, uh, the Trailblazers are here in Denver tonight to take on the Nuggets. Take the over uh, with these two. Teams. They have been over in 11 of the last 14 times they have played each other. Um, I think they're averaging like 236, um, and the total is at 234 and a half. So I'm going to play the over between the Nuggets and the Trailblazers tonight on the 234 and a half. That's just a standard line, not getting crazy with that one or anything like that. So there's some fun in the NHL, a couple more college hoops as well as NBA. Brad, the floor is yours. All right, uh, I'm going to go back to that Nuggets game, and I got an OGP slash SGP for that ass. Uh, I'm going to take Jamal Murray, six-plus assists in that game, and I'm going to correlate, synergize, bring it all together, uh, the Nuggets on the money line. Uh, just a two-legger there, plus 120. If you put that together at BetMGM, you look at Murray. He's been over this in two or three matchups. And it's a Blazers this season. He's got 20 dimes, 20 in his last two games against them. Uh, I know he's only been over this assist line on uh, five and a half and two of his last seven, but he's overdue. And Portland, middle of the pack in their last 10 in the NBA and assists. Uh, allowed per game. So, again, Murray, six-plus dimes. Uh, the Nuggets on the money nine, plus 120. Going back to college basketball, uh, I'm just going to rapid fire a couple of parlays here that I like. I got a three-legger, took Air Force, Boise State, and Kentucky, all money lines. All they got to do is win straight up, plus 183 at DraftKings. And also have a little two-legger at low minus odds, minus 106, on the Tennessee Volunteers in Starkville tonight uh, and Utah State, who I discussed earlier on in the pod. So the Vols win, the Aggies win. That's minus 106 at DraftKings. And then one last game on the spread. Give me Boise minus five in the Mountain West against Nevada. This game in Idaho. Uh, a little bit of background here. Boise has been spectacular. One of the better 
uh, high and mid-major teams out there in college basketball. Number one in offensive, number one in defense efficiency in Mountain West play. They're shooting 41.9% from three, 52.9% inside the arc. And you look at Nevada, number 136 on the season and three-point percentage D. Uh, and over 40% of their shots come from three, but they're only netting 33.2%. On those attempts, I think Max Rice and Agbo, who are both shooting over 39% from beyond the arc, get it done at home for the Broncos, who winnie and gallop their way to a cover. All right, we got to gallop the hell out of here uh, right now on the Fade 5 Podcast. Drop us a rating and review if you enjoy this. Have a great vacation, Lundy. Uh, downing uh, multiple adult beverages there in Mexico. Uh, I may be back tomorrow for a rapid fire solo show, YouTube only. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but in the meantime, fade or follow us on the Twitter, uh, Nate Lundy at Nate Lundy. All of his picks in the spreadsheets, absolutely free and accessible there. I do the exact same exercise, and you can follow me on Twitter at Noisy Huevos. Until next time, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you.